Shalom to all of you. We finally, we get to the end of this first book of the Torah, Bereshit. Uh, this has been a, a, an extraordinary for me journey to start the year with applying the principle of the Torah. Instead of trying to teach or to, to argue about I, I, uh, ideas and uh, religious ideas, uh, theological ideas, uh, and who is, who is not, and who say, who didn't say. Uh, I have been trying to apply the principle of the Torah. I have been teaching you from the beginning that the basic revelation of the Creator are the Ten Commandments, and we are going to see that in the next book, Shemot. You know, but uh, this time, the, these principles, are, you're going to see that they are. Uh, they are trans transpired all over. They go through the, the whole Torah. You can see it, you can smell it, you can see it. What these Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. Uh, and one of the things that many times we have more applications is about the deductions or the, the ideas of other people, the sayings of other people, than to try to understand the principle by himself. And sometimes the application on particular cases become the law, okay? And doing that, what we do is we inscribe those things in the rock. And the only thing that has been inscribed on the rock by the, by the finger of the Creator, that's what the scriptures say, is the Ten Commandments. Everything else has been passed through letters. And then the Ten Commandments are the basic of our own understanding. And we, um, here, at the end of this uh, Bereshit, we are going to end it with the, our patriarchs, with the life of our patriarchs. Um, by he, and he live, interestingly enough, uh, is talking about that they are going to die. Who, there are two uh, patriarchs that are going to die. One is Jacob, and the next is Joseph, his son. And both are going to die in this uh, parasha. We are going to see the next week when we'll see Shemo, when he say that it's going to appear a new Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph. And this is when we start again the tribulations for the people of Israel. And we are going to get in there. But I want to... Uh, speak about something that I have been talking to you through these uh, months. Um, one of the things that is very difficult for all of us is to deal with our own mistakes. And one of the things that is very difficult is for us to learn about forgiveness. You know? And the most difficult thing to forgive is yourself. Um, and believe me or not, many of our psychological diseases that we uh, encounter with the time become because that set of guilt that we have accumulated through the times. And we have not been able to forgive ourselves because we have not been able to accept our wrongdoings and to come clean. What it means to come clean? To confess, to, to accept it, to declare it and to try to make it right. You know, because this is the way that we, uh, uh, the, the Torah the teaches about Teshuvah. We see our greatest heroes in, in the scripture, in this, in this uh, book of Ereshit. No one of them we can consider that is perfect. All of them, they have committed some mistakes, you know. And our father, Jacob, is even the one that had, maybe has accumulated more mistakes than anybody else. And in spite of his accumulations, he's going to deal with the issues that he has done. And, and we learn a, a term that is, is mean, you know, uh, mida connect mida. Uh, measure for measure, that sooner or later you are going to receive what you have done. Until you do not make it right, you cannot literally be living a, a, a better life. The question always I ask the people is, what are the things in your life that you are holding back 
you know, or you have put it under the carpet. What are the things in your life that you have not dealt with, that is still, you know, persecuting you, holding you? Uh, what are the things in your life that you have not been able to forgive yourself? Maybe because you have not dealt with the situation, or because you are not clear about what it has done. In, uh, in this parasha, I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, the brothers of Joseph and Joseph dealing with them at the end. You know, we saw in the last parasha about the encounter that Judah had with uh, Joseph. And basically, Joseph, after he revealed himself to them, he literally forgave them, you know? But uh, in this time of years now, they have been living 17 years. 17 years uh, that they are living in Goshen, and they're having a good life. And, and Jacob has been living very, very well these last 17 years, and, and finally, he is going to die. He asked his uh, son, Joseph, twice to swear to him that he is going to be buried in the promised land. You know, now, you need to understand this thing, why he asked and begged. Because there are many midrashim, many understandings among our sages, that one of the ideas among the uh, Egyptians, first of all, was that their land was superior land than any other land. And of course, you compare the, the, the land of Goshen with the land of Canaan that's dry, there, nothing happened there. Uh, you, it's obvious that they will think, you know, how do you think uh, your land is better than our land? Secondly, for them, they build these pyramids and they build the very things for the death, you know, they embalm their death and they, they, they become like their gods. You know, and, and being Joseph, a very influential, almost a semi-god for the Egyptians, and, and his father is, is, is going to die, well, they want to put it in the, uh, in the Hall of Fame of the saints, or the, or the, or the, or the gods for them, no? And they, they would build another pyramid for, for him to put it uh, over there, Jacob. But Jacob was very clear about his relationship with the Creator. He was not an Egyptian. And you're going to see that Joseph neither, even that Joseph was not living in Goshen. And he may ask his son, please uh, swear me that you are going to bury me. Then Joseph needs to go through the, 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 special, the uh, special people in, uh, close to Pharaoh to talk to them before he talks directly to the, to the Pharaoh. And he said, being him the number two, he said, please, Tell Pharaoh that uh, my father made me swear that he was going to be buried in, uh, in, in his land, you know? And when the Pharaoh heard that was his father, Joseph's father, who asked him twice to, uh, to promise him, you know, he said, well, if your father has asked you, I will let you go. Because that also means something very bad for the Egyptians. Because basically, Pharaoh was saying, you know, Goshen is not good enough for you. I, am, I have given you the best, and your people don't, don't even accept it. And then in this way, uh, Joseph played to Pharaoh in a way that he was humble and he was honoring his father. And Pharaoh allowed, and he sent a, a big, big delegation that to the point that in the Canaanites, they were scared about what the, the, the Egyptians got it there with, with, the, with the bearing uh, Jacob. In that moment after it was buried and passed the time, what happened? They are coming back. Let me read to you from chapter 50. I'm going to start in verse 15. Joseph's brothers perceived that their father was dead, and they say, Perhaps Joseph will nurse hatred against us, and then he will surely repay us all the evil that we did to him. 
So, they instructed that Joseph be told, your father gave orders before his death, saying, Thus shall you say to Joseph, Oh, please kindly forgive this spiteful deed of your brothers and their sin, for they have done you evil. So now please forgive this spite, the spiteful deed of the servants of your father's God. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. I want to stop here. Look at the same way that uh, Joseph used to speak to others, to others to tell the Pharaoh. His brothers follow the same. Uh, they don't go directly to him. They use somebody, they, they use the in-between. By the way, this is a very popular, especially in Latin America, uh, you don't never go to the, directly to the, to the main person, you know? You, you look for somebody who knows that person, who has means of ways to talk to that person, and that person talks on behalf of you, and you get certain favors. You know? that is, that has been, there's nothing new that, that has been done in this way. That means def ref deference and respect. Joseph was very touched. And look at what Joseph answered. <clears throat> and Joseph wept when he they spoke to him. And his brothers themselves also went and flung themselves before him and say, after he heard, we are ready to be your slaves. Look at how much guilt they have. But as Joseph said to them, Fear not, for I, instead of God, here the word I am instead of God, it's a very interesting word, is hatahat, you know, and sometimes they translate it as an animal, I am a, like a servant, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, for I am instead of God. Although you intended me harm, God intended for good in order to accomplish, it is clear as this day, a mass of people be kept alive. So now, fear not, I will sustain you and your little one. Thus he comforted them and appealed to their emotions. What I'm trying to bring to you now, sometimes we build things and ideas why? Because we have not dealt with issues. We have not clarified. We have put it like a, under the carpet or cover. When you don't deal with issues, when you don't want to talk about certain issues, sooner or later they are going to catch you. Um, and here there is a very interesting principle. They already, they already has heard from his brother 17 years prior to this, you know, uh, that he was already forgiving them. Has passed from that time to the moment that they betrayed their, their, uh, their brother, 39 years. The same way that when he appeared to them, 39, he was 39 years. You know, in, the, in, in, this, uh, in this study, there are a lot of numbers that teach us a lot of things, and we can compare one with the other. Okay, uh, only to, to give you. Not, not so much about, in gema this are gematria too that you can apply. But here only a basic principle. For example, Joseph lived with his father for 17 years. You know? And then his father lived in Goshen with him for 17 years. You know? Then, for se the first 17 years of, jo of Joseph, his father took care of him. The last 17 years of his father, Joseph took care of him. You can see this, uh, uh, and there are other, all, other things. The, you know, um, they are, you, you, you go, the, for example, only to give you a, 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 something to think. Uh, the the parasha of this week is Bayahi. You know, if you added the number Bayahi, the sum will be 34. And what is 34? 17 plus 17. The first 17 years and the last 17 years. You know, 
people say, oh, coincidence or whatever, but it's, it's like that. It's, there are many things. 39 years uh, when they betrayed, and, they, and he was 39 years when they found it. Or uh, there are many things that we are going to see through, through the time in, in, in the scriptures. But one thing also, the number 17 in Gematria is Tov. You know? And what I mean that? Good. 17. I made this parenthesis to tell you about even the numbers in, in the scripture has meanings that we need to find it and to discover. The question I say is, is did Joseph told his father what he, his brothers did to him? Did his brothers confess to their father what they did to their brother? Uh, and this is a question. And it's very difficult to, to decide it, but we are going to be getting there. The qu another question is, did really Jacob say that to his children to tell Joseph to forgive them? Or they invented that? The Torah is so, in, so interesting that you can read because show us our emotions and show us how we really are as human beings. You know? One of the things, one of the things that we have as a norm is to try to justify ourselves. And when we cannot justify ourselves, what do we do? We blame somebody else for our actions. We throw the, 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 the rock to somebody else. You know, we see that from the beginning, from Adam and Eve, Adam and Eva. You know, you're going to see that both of them, who are they going to blame for what their action to the Creator? We need to blame somebody else for what do we do. No, we do not come and say, it's my responsibility. For example, we say, uh, Judah. Judah is a very classic example of how he responds in a righteous way. Yes, he did something wrong. But uh, once he heard that, what he said immediately? To Tamar, she is more righteous than me. She, he immediately acknowledged his wrongdoing. How many of us we we trying to run away from the responsibility and we trying to blame others. What is happening with with the children, with the brothers of Joseph? All of them they feel guilty. They didn't clarify this with their father, that, and they never clarified this with their brother. And then at the end they are holding this. Meanwhile, the father was alive. They felt in certain way protected, that Joseph wouldn't do anything to them until the, until the father was alive. But when the father was dead, did, and they throw themselves and they say, we are your slaves. They are now knowing that they don't have any excuse. The most difficult thing, according to our sages, is the one that has been injured, the one that has been done wrong, to give a very clear forgiveness. No? Uh, when somebody has done wrong to you, sometimes you say, okay, I forgive you. But uh, the other person who receives it doesn't have the same that he has been forgiving. And start feeling that, is still holding something against me. You know how you sing so many times, I forgive you, but I don't want to see you anymore? No? I forgive you, but I won't talk to you anymore? No? Then this is the, 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 what is happening in this picture. And Joseph also needs to come clear. 
and he cries. And this time he cries because he realizes that his brother has been living in pain for these last 17 years, in fear, because they, ne they never felt a true forgiving. Part of the reason we can uh, make conjecture, for example, he didn't live in Goshen. He lived in the palace. And, uh, and he only will go to visit his, uh, uh, his father when, from time to time when was necessary. And here, very clear at the beginning, he say, um, uh, Jacob was not feeling well. And, and they called him to see him, and he needed to talk to him. Another thing that's very interesting in this passage, but because we have talked about uh, midad keneg midad, you know, if you see here, there is a reenactment and the blessing of the two children that he's going to, Jacob is going to acquire from Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. When he crossed the arms, you know, and, and with the left hand goes to Manashe, and with the right hand is going to go to Ephraim. You know, and, and Joseph immediately thinks that he's doing wrong. He said, Daddy, you're doing wrong. I said, no, it's okay, I know. And he said, I know that there are going to be uh, a special uh, uh, tribes with special people, they're going to be fruitful, but uh, Ephraim is going to be more numerous. No, but both are going to be. This is almost, in, in the Torah, is teaching us the re, uh, uh, coming back to the essence of regenerating in a good way. Jacob and Isaac, two brothers, that they hate each other. The youngest was taking the position of the oldest, and there was a separation. In this case, now comes back two brothers who love each other, and they also can, the youngest is over the oldest one, and instead to be a separation, there is a unit. What the Torah is teaching us, that there is always, the new generations can become better if we do the right things, if we teach the right things. One of the greatest problems that we are facing today in our generation, it's about the secularization of the world and especially of our children. They, they are more and more getting away from a relationship with the Creator. You know, and we learn from Ephraim and Manasseh that in spite that they live in a foreign environment, in spite that their own mother was no an Israelite, was no a Jew, no? At that time, at the time they were not Jewish, but was not Israelite, was not descendant of Israel. You know, the, by the way, that, that creates also a big problem for many, many rabbis that has invented this idea that uh, Jewishness or uh, being an Israelite come from the mother, because then Manasseh and Ephraim wouldn't be Israelite. Some people say, oh, the, uh, uh, the mother converted <laughs> before. You know, the, it's all, all the things that we're trying to use to cover up. But here, teach something about Joseph, about his integrity. In spite to live in a very foreign environment, pagan environment, he was able to keep his children under the fear, under, under the reverence of the Creator. And this is not about being religious, because we confuse religion with relationship. And I repeat this so many times that I hope that you don't get tired to hear me the same thing, but until we don't put in practice, it's only words. Sometimes I, as your rabbi, I get disappointed because I teach things, principles, and, and we go back again to the same thing. One of the greatest principles in the Torah is teaching us about our life, our heart. The Creator has given us the free will. You know, 
the Vihira Hopshi, to do that is the greatest gift of the Creator to each one of us. Why? Because each one of us, we are responsible for what we do. The children of Israel, the Jacob, all of them, with the section of Benjamin at that time, because he was not part of the problem, he, they were responsible for what they did. And, and they, they couldn't run away. They were responsible. And they need to deal with their own responsibilities. The Creator didn't say to them, please go and kill your brother. As many people are trying to teach. That was the Creator who put in them in order to fulfill his, uh, his prophecy. Was a decision of the brother who did it. Because very easy it is to blame the Creator. It's the same way today when we teach our children about walking in the presence of the Creator. And we teach others to walk in the presence of the Creator. You know, and many, what do they want? Most of us, maybe that's his nature. We want the one, two, three instead to have uh, to understand a relationship. Most of us, we are more emphasizing about liturgical things than about real issues and relationship. For many of us, it's more important what I need to do than what I am doing. But for many of us, it's more important how they look at me instead of who I am. And this is why we are losing our young people. And we are more and more we are becoming seculars. Look, Joseph, without being religious, maintained his identity, even that he didn't dress according to the Israelites. And his two children followed him, even that they had a mother who was no a, a part of Israel. And she didn't have the upbringing of the, 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 the blessings or, or the teachings of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Joseph was able to be the head of his home. And, and I am sure that he had a very good, a very good wife who followed him. But here you see how was he taught and, and the wife needed to follow him. But what happened when the, the husband has the leadership and has the spiritual leadership and the wife opposed that? you're going to see that there's a big, big problem. And you're going to see that the children come out totally confused. Because the mothers don't realize the strength and the force that they had in their homes. You know, we can say very easily, you know, that Joseph was a great man. But I want to tell you one thing here. A senat was a wonderful wife. Because if a senat didn't follow her husband, her children wouldn't be like that. Ladies, you have a very important role, the most important role that you can imagine. Because the, the reality of the home is, is nurtured by the mother. A home becomes totally destroyed if the mother is not strong, if the mother is not, is not clear and it doesn't follow the, the spiritual direction of the husband. And the saddest part is I have seen too many homes in which the spiritual leader is very weak. And then the women, they need to take that spiritual leadership. 
Then I say to the men, do not complain. Do not complain. If, if your wife doesn't follow you, are you being a good leader or not? Joseph demonstrated, in, in spite of the, the circumstances that he lived, that he was totally dedicated to the, the Boreo land, the creator of the world. And in spite of the very difficult situation that he lived, he never, ever abandoned the creator, totally the contrary. Every time he gave the credit to the creator, even in this moment, when he forgives completely his brother, he say, what the intention of the creator, he did it for good. No, was, no I am that so good that I forgive, but it's already I see that the creator trying to do it. That was the purpose, to save you. I want to, I want to ask you this question to all of you. Each one of us will come from different settings and different upbringings. You know? Some of us, we are young parents. Some of us, we are now over the, 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 the line. You know, we have passed our time. Now we are grandparents or great-grandparents. Uh, and start asking yourself, I was able to be a good support, a good guidance. I was able to maintain my positions. I was able to give it the right direction to my family. Now, by the way, in, 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 in the Torah, in, 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 the, in the Tanakh, in Mishlei, we have many things that they tell us about this idea, but not necessarily the Creator give us an assurance that this is what's going to happen. What He said to us is this, that we are going, if we do our best, We can have wonderful situation, but sometimes we can have uh, no, not the best uh, uh, results, because the results at the end, again, is up to each one of the children, because there is behirahoshi, free will. But one thing in, is mislay in Proverbs said very clear: if we take care of the children when they are young. They are going to grow with fear, with reverence to the Creator. Now, for the young people, I say, you know, sometimes we try, you know, we have some new ideas, we, 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 we check everything, not, nothing m makes sense. I remember when I was young, I thought I was so wise and so, so smart, you know? And it was a time that I honestly thought I was smarter than my father. And then it took me a time to realize how little I knew and how was, was my father. And I start to appreciate even more him. But, you know, instead to question your, your, your parents, start analyzing yourself. Because that is the problem about pointing one finger and there are three fingers back to you. And always check on this as a young person that you are. When my parents say something to me, is because they hate me or because they love me? And I can assure you something. Most of the parents, when they give you an advice, even that they look like party poopers, it's for your own good. If for your best. That you cannot see in that moment, but it's the best. How many of us parents we have gone through difficulties with our own children? And uh, um, for more advice that we give to them, they do whatever they want to do. And then you, you dare to say to them, you see that happened to you because I told you not to do that and you did it. I told you so, and oh, they, they get even worse, you know? And then we need to be wise too as parents. The parents cannot divorce their children. 
Sometimes I wanted to divorce them, but it's impossible. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You can you can divorce your spouse, but you cannot divorce your children. You need to deal with them, to live with them, even if sometimes you don't like it. They are yours. Joseph has two children, and he said the rest of the children that he had, and we don't know if he had more children or no. You know, uh, 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 there are conjectures that people that say uh, they are say they say yes, and they say that they know he has only two more children, no more, whatever it is. But Menashe and Ephraim became part of the twelve tribes, and instead to be twelve, they become thirteen, and this is a beautiful number. We start with gematria, it's a beautiful number. Beautiful in the number of the had, the, 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 the one, and the oneness of the creator. They became one. You know, it's interesting uh, now I'm talking about number 13. Uh, for us Jewish people, 13 is a beautiful number. For the rest of the world, <laughs> it's a bad number, but like they call it. And for us, it's the most beautiful number. Okay, that tells you about how different we are about the rest of the world. The Creator makes us like that, different, in order to make a mess, to give a message. What is the, finally the message that we have received in this parash in this uh, beautiful book of Ereshit? That the Lord is the Creator, the Boreolam, and the Lord is in charge of everything. He knows everything. But uh, he gives us the opportunity to do our own things. And we are not judged only because we commit mistakes or we do something wrong. Totally the contrary. We have a, a creator that is always with arms extended. And in spite of our own wrongdoings, he is faithful. When he makes a promise, he keeps his promise. He is not like us. His yes is yes and his no is no. He never changed. And this is the problem for us when we relate it with the Creator. Because it's the same attitude that the brothers of Joseph have with Joseph. We feel bad. And I don't know what Joseph is going to do. But Joseph already gave his word. Joseph already has forgiven them. And the Creator is like that. When you are forgiven by the Creator, it's done. Then, at the beginning, I said, the most difficult thing <laughs> is not to receive the forgiveness of the Creator. The most, most difficult thing is to forgive ourselves. Has you dealt with your issues? Has you dealt with your past? How many of us, how many of us, we have a past? Maybe we have done things very wrong. And maybe nobody else knows, only ourselves. But that past is hunting me. The past is getting onto me. Don't you think it's time that you relax and you give it and you put it to the Creator and say, thank you for giving me a break, for forgiving me, I can start. There are so many psychological diseases that happen because you do not forgive yourself. There are so many reactions, psychologically speaking, because you don't deal with the issues and you are a runner, and you never confront it. Joseph, after he was confronted with his brother, after he confronted his brother, he saw that was already clear. But uh, the brothers never, finally, until this time. Are you confronting your own fears? Don't let your fears to destroy your life. Let's begin a new life 
and the next week we are going to start a new route about lo lo looking at Israel coming out of slavery and how they have been traumatized to the point that they don't know who even they are until the Creator works with Moshe Ravenu to give them again their identity as the chosen people. Shabbat Shalom.